Hi, I'm Sam Wong from FundableStartups.com. I'm a startup CEO coach, author, and the instructor for a library of startup training classes. We're going to do a visual walkthrough of how a post-money safe increases founder dilution. This is an advanced topic that builds on concepts previously explained in our other YouTube videos. If you're not familiar with the details of a post-money safe, then I'd suggest you watch both of these videos before continuing with this one. Be advised that this video is general information only. Please consult a qualified professional who knows your situation before making any decisions. To understand how a post-money safe increases founder dilution, we'll start with some general concepts. Dilution is fundamentally a zero-sum game. The total amount of equity in a startup is always 100%. No more, no less. When a new investor is issued stock, one or more existing shareholders get diluted. Let's look at how this works with a pre-money safe. In this first scenario, before raising any outside investment, the only shareholders are the founders and employees. The founders soon close their first safe, which results in the impending dilution of all existing shareholders, which at this time are just the employees. Technically, there is no dilution yet because the safe holders don't yet hold any stock. They only hold the right for stock at some point in the future when a qualified equity funding round closes. That's why this diagram says pending dilution. Sometime later, the founders close their second safe, which results in the impending dilution of all existing stakeholders, which at this time are the employees and safe investor number one. Sometime later again, the founders close their third safe, which results in the impending dilution of all existing stakeholders, which at this time are the employees, safe investor number one, and safe investor number two. Finally, a new investor agrees to buy preferred stock in the startup. This triggers the conversion of all three safes into preferred stock. When this happens, all of the existing stakeholders get diluted. This includes the employees as well as all three safe holders. How much dilution does each party get? We won't actually answer that question here because we're focused on understanding the process and not the math. Suffice it to say the math can get very hairy. What is clear is this process results in safe investor number three being diluted one time, safe investor number two being diluted two times, safe investor number one being diluted three times, and the employees being diluted four times. Given this process, hopefully you can see why dilution with pre-money safes is difficult to predict. You don't exactly know how much you'll be diluted because it depends on one, how many safes are daisy chain together, and two, the terms of each safe, and three, the amount raised and the valuation on the preferred stock investment. As a founder using pre-money safes, all you can do is run multiple scenarios to model out what might happen. Hopefully, this sequential animation makes it clear how with pre-money safes, new investors dilute all existing stakeholders. This basically creates a nested chain of dilution as illustrated by the blue, green, yellow, and red rectangles. Now, let's look at how this works with a post-money safe and the exact same funding scenario. Before any funds are raised, the employees own all of the stock in the company, just like before. The founders close their first safe, which results in the impending dilution of the employees. When the founders close their second safe, this results in the impending dilution of, again, just the employees. Unlike the scenario with the pre-money safe, safe investor number one does not suffer any dilution as a result of safe number two. When the founders close their third safe, this results in the impending dilution of, again, just the employees. Safe investors number one and number two do not suffer any dilution. Finally, a new investor agrees to buy preferred stock in the startup. This triggers the conversion of all three safes into preferred stock. When this happens, all of the existing stakeholders get diluted. So the only time any safe holder gets diluted is when the preferred stock investment closes. 
This behavior is similar to having a full ratchet anti-dilution clause for the early safe investors. We cover anti-dilution terms in the How to Prepare for a Startup Term Sheet training class. To cut to the chase, the most investor-friendly type of anti-dilution is a full ratchet. So this is very unfavorable to the employees. Now, let's summarize the dilution. Each safe investor is only diluted one time. The employees, however, get diluted four times. If you're keeping score, the change from a pre-money to a post-money safe reduces the dilution for investors one and two. If you're thinking that dilution has to go somewhere, you're absolutely right. It hits the employees. Hopefully, this sequential animation makes it clear how with a chain of post-money safes, new investors primarily dilute the employees. Thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, we'd greatly appreciate it if you would do us the favor of liking this video, subscribing to our channel, and clicking the bell so you'll be notified when we post new content. You can find more startup resources and training on our website, fundablestartups.com.